welcome back to our virtual scavenger hunt here at the Maine State Museum. And we are in the 12,000 Years of Maine exhibit. That's going to be our focus for this segment. Remember, you're going to be following along in our scavenger hunt, which is found on our website. And uh, we'll be going through some of these questions and giving you guys some clues. So remember to listen carefully and look closely. This exhibit is all about what Maine was like right after the Ice Age. We're going to be giving you an idea of what it was like to live in Maine 12,000 years ago. So come along and join us as we go down our time tunnel where we're going all the way back to 12,000 years. The area we now call Maine has only had that name for a couple of hundred years. Maine is Wabanaki homeland. Wabanaki means people of the Dawnland and includes the Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Abernaki nations. According to oral histories, the Wabanaki have lived here since time immemorial. According to the archaeological record, there have been people in Maine for at least 13,000 years. Today, Wabanaki people still live in the land that we now call Maine. The Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Mi'kmaq, and Maliseet tribes are sovereign, meaning they are self-governing nations. They have adapted their ways of life over the years, though they keep many important traditions alive. The environment we all live in has also changed over the years. Fourteen thousand years ago, the northern part of North America was covered with a glacier that was over a mile thick. When the first people lived in what is now Maine, it was a very cold place. People would get food by hunting and gathering. They would gather up plants that were growing in the wild and on animals that were around. And some of the animals are around, we have examples of them right here. We have walrus. We have a tooth of a woolly mammoth and also a mastodon. And we have out of a seal. So these are some of the animals over here. This is what Western Maine looked like about nine or 10,000 years ago. After hunting, Maine's first people needed a place to store their meat. Because Maine was so cold at this time, what they would do is dig a hole in the ground and a few feet down, they would come across what's called permafrost. They would then take some rocks, make a circle, put the meat in, cover it up with more rocks and wood, and this is called a meat cache.
So this is another section of our 12,000 Years of Mean, and it's featuring this really um, interesting spear and what we call a spear thrower. You can see that we've got this mural behind it and things are starting to green up. Um, we're seeing more trees than we did in our earlier mural, and we have different animals than we were talking about. None of the, the mastodon and the mammoth. We have animals that we're used to seeing here in Maine. Uh, bear, deer, moose, beaver, and these were all food um, sources for the, the Native Americans living here at the time. Uh, we also have some technology improvements going on over here. Um, we have our projectile points that are a rounded shape and they're also um, kind of interchangeable to the spear. So if you're hunting an animal that has a really thick skin, like a moose or a bear, and you were able to throw that spear and then retract it and be able to reload it and use it again without um, uh, having to, to worry about losing the entire uh, spear shaft. We also have these feathers right over here um, and those are pretty important to making sure that your spear is going to go as fast and straight as it possibly can. Without them it might wobble through the air a little bit. We also have this other tool right on the bottom of our spear um, which is actually our spear thrower. It's an atlatl stick. It's got a banner stone that's giving it a little extra weight and you kind of would almost balance it over your shoulder and kind of arc up. It's a little difficult to do, so you'd have to practice, but once you got it, it's going to enable you to throw almost three times farther and faster than what it would be if you just used your hands. Now we're in the section of our 12,000 Years of Meme exhibit um, where we're looking at castings of petroglyphs that were found um, on rock faces um, and they're in, really found in two major locations that we're looking at here and that's in Epton, Maine as well as in Machiasport. They're both locations that are along waterways. They show Wabanaki history and culture and are sacred to members of the Wabanaki tribes in Maine today. Petroglyphs share the stories of their ancestors who lived hundreds and thousands of years ago. Over the years, Wabanaki people in Maine have used rivers for transportation as well as resources. If you wanted to get from one place to another before roads and cars, you could use rivers like highways. Wabanaki people made their own canoes using natural resources like trees. 
Different kinds of trees and different parts of the tree can be used to build different things. If you look at this canoe and take a look at these baskets, you can see they are made from the same material. Many Wabanaki people in Maine carry on the tradition of basket making and canoe making. In this photo, Penobscot cultural artisan Barry Dana is demonstrating how to make a bark covered canoe. Today, Wabanaki people are famous for their basket making and have won many national awards. This basket was made by modern artist Gal Frey, a Passamaquoddy woman. Well, thank you for joining us on our virtual scavenger hunt of the 12,000 Years in Maine exhibit. We hope you join us next time. We're going to be on the fourth floor of the Maine State Museum in our newest permanent exhibit called At Home in Maine, all about people coming to Maine and making Maine their home. See you then.